Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of What the Dementia by Bamboo Care. I'm your host, Brianna Wilson. I am a certified dementia practitioner and the founder of Bamboo Care. Today's topic is inspired by care partners running into an issue when they put things away for safety, but their partner keeps asking about the item and it's causing some problems. And so this is common with things like wallets, checkbooks, credit cards, debit cards, cash, jewelry, things like that. But for this episode, we will just focus on more of the finance-based things, okay? So here's an example scenario of when things can go wrong. So your partner asks you, where is my checkbook? You say, I put it up for your safety so it can't get lost or stolen. You don't need it right now. Your partner says, well, I want my checkbook, and I also need the little card to get my money out. You say, no, you're not getting your checkbook. You don't need it. It's safe where it is. Your partner says, well, what's my balance then? Tell me that. And you say, I don't know what your balance is, but I'm sure it's fine because nobody has been using your accounts. Now, that's just not cutting it for your partner, and they are getting increasingly agitated with you, and they insist that you give them their checkbook because they need to figure some things out. But of course, you keep saying no. Now, later that night, you hear your partner talking on the phone with a family member, telling them how you stole their checkbook and won't give it back. And then your partner continues to bug you about the checkbook again and again, and this goes on for days. Okay? So, what's What's gone wrong here and what can we do? So we have to think of what's a reasonable solution to our specific situation because there's usually much more to the story, right? And it will also depend on what stage of dementia your partner's in. So let's back up a bit. If your partner is in the early stages of dementia, you want to be very, very careful about take, take, taking. So my nickname for the early stages is the stages of the take and tell, because this is where care partners have a tendency to start taking away things and telling their partner what they can and can't do. And if we're being honest, nobody likes that, right? So this can end up creating a lot of tension in the relationship right off the back. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to foster a partnership and an agreement as much as possible. And the earlier that we can start this, the better. Now, since we're talking about finances, many care partners are likely to take this over pretty quickly because maybe bills are not getting paid or maybe they're getting double paid or they may be misplacing their cards, their checkbook or falling victim to various scams. But If managing finances is something that's important for your partner, it may not be so easy for them to just give it up willingly. So you may have to try discussing an arrangement where you are managing finances together. So for example, you set aside budget days where you guys go through the bills together. Maybe mom writes the check, you mail it off if you guys are still doing the whole check thing. And then you write down somewhere that makes sense and can easily be seen that the bills have been paid. Or maybe dad watches you pay the bills online. And again, you write it down and mark off that the bills have been paid. And then you meet again on the next budget day. Now in the early stages of dementia, keeping a calendar can be very, very helpful for a lot of people. It kind of helps them keep things on track a bit better. Now as dementia progresses, a calendar can be absolutely meaningless. I mean, what does it actually mean? What are the days? What's written on the days? Like the whole concept of time becomes a blur. So it often doesn't make that much sense for a lot of people as the dementia progresses. Now, if you're already past this phase and it's too hard to rewind because let's say that you've already taken away the things, but your partner keeps asking about a debit card or a credit card or a checkbook, then you still have a couple options. Now, if your partner lives with you or you live with them and they never go anywhere without you, you can give them their wallet and then photocopy their ID and laminate the copy. If it's cash that they're worried about, give them a little cash, maybe a $10 bill and a $5 bill and maybe five ones, that gives them a little bit of variety to work with. I mean, it's only 20 bucks. I've lost (laughs) way more than that, okay? Put a little change in there if that's something that they're into, if they have a photo that they like to keep in their wallet, 
give them a photocopy of that, put it in there. If they have debit or credit cards, you can report them as lost and get a replacement. Let them keep the originals, which would be the cards that no longer work, right, because they've been disabled. And essentially what you want to try to do is replicate the wallet as best as you can, okay? And you don't want to use things like Monopoly money or the fake money that you can get from like the dollar store if your partner's in the earlier stages of dementia because it's just not going to fly. You have to give them real money, okay? Now the good thing is if they lose this wallet, none of it is really a big deal. And guess what? It's likely going to be somewhere in the house because they haven't gone anywhere. Then when they ask, where's my wallet? Or maybe accuse you of stealing it. Instead of throwing yourself under the bus and saying, uh, well, I took it and I put it up, you can say, oh no, your wallet's missing? Would you like me to help you find it? Now you may be seen as the helpful one and not so much of as the bad guy. Now, if your partner does accuse you of stealing their wallet or anything else for that matter, it's very important that you do not argue about it with them or try to convince them that you didn't steal it because it likely won't work and everyone's just going to be irritated, okay? So the best thing that you can do is often to just offer to help them find it or apologize if you moved it and tell them that you'll go get it. You want to try to prevent things from blowing up and becoming a bigger ordeal, okay? You may also consider buying multiple cheap similar wallets so that if you can't find it or your partner keeps bringing up the lost wallet, then bam, you're ready. Now the tricky part about this may be like the debit or credit cards because you can't just get a whole bunch of those all willy-nilly. But if you can get away with the laminated photocopies of the cards, then maybe that's an option. Now checkbooks are a bit more tricky because you can't cancel them as easily as you can like a card. You know, some banks require you to close the whole account, which may not be what you want to do. And some people recommend like fake checkbooks, but I honestly haven't really seen any good options. There are some kid versions that I've seen, but again, that may be kind of hard to pull off, especially in the earlier stages. Now, if your partner is like the person in the example I gave earlier, then they probably just want the checkbook as a security net. They're probably not trying to do anything too special with it. They'll likely check it, mess it in a bit, and then they'll go hide it somewhere. And they may remember where they put it, but more than likely they'll have hid it from themselves as well. So you could say, I think I remember seeing it in a box. Let me go get it for you. You bring the box, you bring the checkbook, and you say, here you go, when you're done, you know, you can just put it back in the box. Make it seem like no big deal. Maybe they'll go for it. Maybe they won't, okay? But at least it won't feel like you're keeping it away from them, which can cause a spiral of other issues. But you can still supervise them without having to hawk over them because, again, nobody likes that. And you can also use, like, checkbooks from closed accounts or things like that. But the most important thing is that you'll want to supervise them without being so obvious that that's what you're doing, right? So you go get the checkbook for them. You know when they have it. You're kind of keeping an eye to see what they're doing with the checkbook. Make sure they're not writing checks, tearing it out, going to hide it somewhere so maybe they can do something with it later. But, you know, the point is at least that gives you a little bit more control if they're still into the whole checkbook thing, which a lot of older generations are because that's kind of the system that they grew up on where we're more into like the online banking, which I'm all for because it's so much more convenient. Now, if your partner wants to know their balance or see a bank statement, you can always just show them. If you think showing them a real bank statement or balance will like freak them out, maybe make a copy of an old bank statement that makes them feel good. But you want to be mindful of the date. If your partner has kind of lost perception of time, then the date may not matter so much, but it's just something you'll want to be aware of, okay? Now, let's say your partner lives alone still, which is usually not going to be for a very long period of time because living alone can start to become really dangerous for a multitude of reasons. But let's just say that for now, you or someone else checks in on them regularly or they have a provider for such and such many hours a day. 
okay? Something you can do if the issue is them misplacing their wallet or purse or maybe they leave cards in their pants, you can see if they're open to a sign or label that says check your pockets or put wallet in the basket or hang purse here and see if that helps them keep up with their purse or their wallet or their cards. Now, wherever you put this signage, you want to make sure that it makes sense and that it would be somewhere that they would naturally gravitate to. And you also want to make sure that it's big and bold enough and contrasts well with whatever surface it's on and that it's in their line of sight. So not too high, not too low, okay? If the problem is with them spending money without anyone knowing, maybe they've discovered the world of online shopping or they're still trying to send checks by mail or maybe for now they're still driving so they spend money at the store or maybe they just like feeling like they have some control over how their money is being spent even if they don't often spend it. You can set up a separate account with your name on it too of course that has withdrawal protection or doesn't allow you to overdraw. You can set up withdrawal alerts if the bank allows you to do that. And you'll want to put like a set amount in the account, kind of like an allowance, but you wouldn't want to call it that or tell them that unless it's an idea that they're open to. Because honestly, some people don't mind, but some people do. And it can be a real big issue if you're like, so I'm, I'm giving you an allowance. And you know, some people might not be all for that, you know? Also, showing them that their bills have been paid can help a lot, especially if you have kind of taken over the bills, showing them that they have been paid, again, maybe setting up a budget day or two each month and going over everything, keeping a calendar. That way they can still be in the loop and it may calm down their nerves a bit. So these are just a few ideas and depending on your situation, you'll have to get creative. But when you're thinking of how to handle your specific situation, the question that I want you to keep in mind is, how can I give my partner the independence and control they need to feel satisfied? And the answer to this question may look different for each person's partner, okay? But that's the overarching goal. Most of us take pride in our independence and we like having some sense of control. And that's no different from your partner as well, okay? So as I always say, I hope that this podcast was informative and that you learned something of value. If you have any questions, comments, or future podcast requests, you can send us a voice message on whatthedementia.com or send us an email at podcast at whatthedementia.com. If you haven't tuned into our last podcast episode, we have started a Q&A series where we answer three questions each week. If you would like to submit your question, you can also send us a voice message on whatthedementia.com or send us an email at podcast at whatthedementia.com and I will be sure to get your question in on one of the next series. So thank you guys so much for joining us on another episode of What the Dementia by Bamboo Care. We look forward to catching you on the next episode. Take care, and until next time, stay strong, carry on, and remember, you are not alone. Bamboo Care is always here.